Church United Methodist Church, Normandy. It is September the 5th, Labor Day weekend, 2021. Let's stand and let's sing 73. Oh, worship the King.
Falls is Saturday, September 11th. Who else has a birthday this week we don't know about? Well, sing happy birthday to them. Grimes, 
Sandy Shaw, Tiffany McKinney, uh, and Rachel Robinson. We were all at the school Friday with all of our athletes. There's about 100 of them there. And they were very, very appreciative. We started with breakfast, and that was really good. Got to see our little win in Panthers. Well, and you know, Lincoln McAllister broke his arm really bad Thursday night. Lincoln <laughs> McAllister. He's a JV ball player, but he, he, he broke it both bones in his arm. I think he had surgery was it yesterday. Day or two yesterday. But the Panthers did win. <laughs> 47 to 14, I think. Okay, the, the share shop's still going on, so if you have something that's clean, clothes, we want them, call me up and I'll take them down there. We're having a UMW meeting on Monday, September 13th at 10.30 in the Fellowship Hall. No food, just a meeting. And there's a trustees meeting Sunday the 19th following church. Is there any other announcements? If not, y'all have a good week. The, uh, the friend I mentioned last week who was in the hospital with COVID, David uh, Rumbelo, he did, uh, he passed away yesterday. Let's keep David and, and his family in your prayers. And let's, uh, let's go to the prayer. Lord God, as we come to you, we pray that your presence will be felt among us. We ask, Lord God, come, Holy Spirit, Come. Uh, we pray, God, for all those that uh, are in our hearts today, the ones we've mentioned, the ones that we've just kept on our hearts. We pray, God, you'd be with each one. We ask, Lord God, for healing. We know with you all things are possible. And we just pray, Lord God, that, that, that where it is possible, that uh, folks could be healed and be brought back to uh, full strength, even better than they were, and do those things they want and love to do. Help all of us, Lord God, to listen to you, to gain insight as to the calling that you place on our lives so that we can be about the work that you want us to do. Lord God, we ask you to, to guide our steps and keep us following you. And we pray all of this in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's join now in our prayer of illumination. Lord, open our hearts and minds by the power of your Holy Spirit, that as the scriptures are read in your word for we may hear with joy what you say to us today. Amen. The reading today is from 2 Timothy. Chapter 3, verses 10 through 17. Now you have observed my teaching, my conduct, my aim in life, my faith, my patience, my love, my steadfastness, my, my persecutions and suffering the things that happened to me in Antioch, Iconium, and Lystra. What persecutions I endured. Yet the Lord rescued me from all of them. Indeed, all who want to live a godly life in Christ Jesus will be persecuted. But wicked people and impostors will go from bad to worse, deceiving others and being deceived. But as for you, continue in what you have learned and firmly believed knowing from whom you learned it, and how from childhood you have known the sacred writings that are able to instruct you for salvation through faith in Christ Jesus. All scripture is inspired by God and is useful for teaching, for reproof, for correction, and for training in righteousness, so that everyone who belongs to God may be proficient and equipped for every good work. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Everybody's all stand and let's join together in our affirmation of faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, 
born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Glory to the Father. to do. 
And uh, if you missed any of those, they're all up on Facebook and on YouTube, and, and you can go to our church's website to, to find those if you want to refresh um, or if you just missed them. But if you, if you would, I would ask you to please uh, grab one of those forms, pray it over it, and then fill that out. Our uh, nominations committee will be meeting soon. Our charge conference will be meeting after that. And uh, we, we're going to be electing officers for next year. And that may, that may give our, our nominations uh, some, some guidance uh, for that time. Also, I want to mention that there's a uh, close to where those are. There's also another stack that is a schedule for the story where it lays out the chapters and the Sundays that we'll be preaching from the story. And we're going to start with chapter one next week. Uh, creation. So if you want to grab one of those, they're, they're also in the back and also on the table in the office area. Uh, one of the things I'm, I'm asking folks to do as they read is to, uh, as you read the chapter, there, there's four things I'm asking that, that you look for. And if you're coming to, to, to the one of the, the covenant groups, this is what we're going to be looking at. The first is something that you like, something that really jumps out at you, that, that means a lot. The second thing I'm asking folks to look for is maybe something you don't like or something that you question or something you're not sure about. And then the third would be just a quote, uh, a passage, a phrase, a couple of words, just however long, but just a quote from the passage. And then fourth would be a, a, an action step or something something that you feel led to do because of the because of the chapter, the chapter that you read. And so we'll be getting We'll begin into that. You know, in our reading, it starts off that uh, Paul is setting himself up as an example. He tells Timothy that you have observed my teaching, my conduct, my inner life, my faith, my patience, my love, my steadfastness, my persecutions. Um, and, and, and Paul is saying, you watch me serve God. You can, you can be like me if you want to as an example of how to follow Jesus. Now, Paul does this in 1 Corinthians a couple of times, where in 1 Corinthians 4, he says, I appeal to you, be imitators of me. And then also in 1 Corinthians 11, he says, be imitators of me as I am of Christ. Now, I have never been comfortable encouraging folks to be like me. But Paul was. Paul was so secure in his walk, so secure in his faith, that, that he felt confident that he could say, you know, I'm doing everything I know to do to be like Jesus. If you could be like me, then both of us together could be like Jesus. Now, what I tend to want to do is point both of us to Jesus and be, be more like Jesus and, and, and sometimes maybe like me, but more, more like Jesus. I'm more comfortable. I'm more comfortable with that. But Paul starts off saying, I want to be an example to you. I'm excited that we're, we're getting into this reading of Scripture, and I came across a list of things that may be indicators you're not reading the Bible enough. So, so here we're going to go with this and see, see what we think. So when the pastor announces from the sermon he's in Galatians, you have to check the table of contents. Uh, you think Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob may have had a few hit songs during the 60s. <laughs> So you, you, you get your Bible and you kind of fan it and a, uh, and a savings bond falls out of it. <laughs> this is an older list. You're about to find out. Um, not this one, but the next one. You think your favorite Old Testament patriarch is Hercules. <laughs> uh, you become frustrated because Charlton Heston isn't in the concordance or the table of contents. <laughs> I knew this crowd would get that. Okay, good. That's <laughs> yeah, dangerous to stereotype. I'm sorry. I'm really sorry. Uh, you catch the kids reading Song of Solomon, and you demand, where did you get this stuff? So, uh, you fall for it every time the pastor says to turn to first condominiums. <laughs> All right, this is the last one, thankfully. Your kids keep asking you to tell this bedtime story, Jonah the shepherd boy, in his ark of many colors. <laughs> I think this was some time ago, but there's, there's a survey that said 80% of Americans say the Bible is the most influential book in human history. 
42% say reading the Bible is very important, but only 17% report regularly reading the Bible. And 45% say they rarely or never read the Bible. So 80% say it's the most important, and almost half rarely or never read the Bible. You know, uh, I've been thinking about why I'm excited that we're doing the story and what I'm looking forward to. And I think I think what's going to happen, and what always happens when when we when we when I read through the scripture, and I, I believe this will happen for us as we all go through the scripture, is that we'll, we'll gain a, a better understanding of God. We'll hopefully gain a better understanding of ourselves and the relationship that God wants to have. With us, we we hopefully as this is a, a story, kind of a narration of the Bible from creation to the new creation, the new heaven and the new earth. I, I hope that as we read it, we'll kind of see maybe where we we fit in to part of that. You know, every time I've ever read through Scripture, whether it's like this or whether it's like Genesis to Revelation, I always learn something new about the Bible, something that apparently I just glossed over before. But this time, you know, the, 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 the present time, often there are passages I've read many times that they just weren't relevant, but all of a sudden they are, and they speak to me. So I'm really excited about that. Of course, any time, any time we focus on God, and we focus on our, our faith journey, and our intent is to grow, this is a great opportunity for all of us to grow closer, closer to God. Now, you know, I like when I listen to music to hit the shuffle button and just mix it all up. And this is not quite that, but, but I've heard where people sometimes like to just plop the Bible open and put their finger down and read what's there. And uh, you may have heard this before, but I'm going to go with it. So one guy, he does it, he plops it down, puts the finger down, he reads, Judas went out and hanged himself. Well, that wasn't positive, so he does it again. He puts the finger down, goes out, and do likewise. <laughs> Y'all are so kind. <laughs> you know, that may not be the best use of scripture, and here's another one that maybe isn't either. So a pastor uh, and his wife, the wife had just baked off a big batch of cookies. And, and she was very concerned that he was going to eat the whole batch as she had to go out and run some errands. And so she put a Bible verse right there in front of the cookies from 1 Corinthians 6 12. Everything is permissible. But not everything is beneficial. And so after the pastor finished eating all the cookies, he put down a Bible verse of his own. From Proverbs 13, 25. The righteous eat to their heart's content. <laughs> but the stomach of the wicked goes hungry. <laughs> so again, I'm not sure that's the best way. But there you go. You know, one of the, one of the, the themes, and, and, and these are mostly in the Psalms, maybe, but, but, but one of the themes you find in the Psalms is that we are to delight in the law of the Lord. We're to delight in the law of the Lord. Now, most of these are from Psalm 119, but here we go. So from Psalm 1, better their delight is in the law of the Lord, and on him they meditate day and night. Psalm 119.70, their hearts are fat and gross, but I delight in your law. 11977, the Psalms again. Uh, let your mercy come to me that I may live, for your law is my delight. Uh, Psalm 11992. If your law had not been my delight, would I I would have perished in my misery. Psalm 119, 174. I long for your salvation, O Lord, and your law is my delight. And then from Romans chapter 722, for I delight in the law of the Lord. In my inmost self. So I hope as we as we head into this journey of the story that one of the things it does for us is it helps us to delight in the Word of God and to delight in God's in God's ways and in how He wants us to live. Delight in the law of the Lord, delight in the Word. Another theme that, that, that happens in Scripture and it, and, it, and it repeats itself multiple times is that the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. And the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. And we see there in Proverbs chapter 1, verse 7, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. And then in Proverbs uh, 2, 5, then you will understand the fear of the Lord and find 
the knowledge of God. And when we read fear of the Lord in the scriptures, I don't think it means to run away and hide and be afraid, maybe get up under the bed or in the closet. I think what it's calling for is reverence and awe. And, and I think what it's alluding to is that God wants to be in a relationship with us. And that, and that the beginning of knowledge comes from our relationship with God. And we read the same thing about wisdom. And this is from Job 28, 28. Uh, truly, the fear of the Lord, that is wisdom, and to depart from evil is understanding. Psalm 1, 11, 10. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. All those who practice it have good understanding. His praise endures forever. Proverbs 9, 10. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, and the knowledge of the Holy One is insight. Proverbs 15, 33. The fear of the Lord is instruction and wisdom, and humility goes before honor. And then from Isaiah 33, 6, He will be the stability of your times, abundance, salvation, wisdom, knowledge, and the fear of the Lord is Zion's treasure. Again, the fear of the Lord, to me, is a relationship with God. That we understand that God is our Lord and Savior, and we, we want that relationship because that relationship leads us to knowledge and and to wisdom. And so what I would ask is that we delight in the law of the Lord and that we, we have a relationship, begin a relationship, continue to build the relationship that God wants to have with us. Now, from 2 Timothy 3, the passage we read today, that chapter begins talking about folks that are, that are selfish. And I'm going to start at verse 2. People will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, Boasters, arrogant, abusive, disobedient to their parents, ungrateful, unholy, inhuman, implacable, slanderers, profligates, brutes, haters of good, treacherous, reckless, swollen with conceit, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, holding to the outward form of godliness, but denying its power. And so that long list of things we want to avoid, what, the, what Paul is saying to Timothy is, people who embrace those things often pretend to be people of faith. They hold to an outward form of godliness. But God's not on the inside. It's just kind of a show. John Wesley said a similar thing when he feared it, that the United Methodist Movement, or the Methodist Movement, would, uh, would eventually fall to the side because it would become an outer shell and it wouldn't penetrate to the heart. And so any time that we embark to do what God wants us to do, we want to build our relationship with God, when we, when we want to start this journey, that we're going to start with the story we want, to, we want to be careful that we don't just do it so that it's on the outside, so that it looks good, so people maybe look over here and say, ah, oh, they're, they're doing that thing over there. We want, we want to endeavor and work as hard as we can to make sure that our heart and our soul is involved. You know, one of the things I was thinking about is that the, in many ways, as I've been thinking about the story and as we're going to take off and do this, is it's like going on a journey, going on a vacation, now, now, a lot of times when we go on vacation, we don't, we don't plan too much. We just get in the car and go. But I hope as we're thinking about, you know, reading through the story that maybe you already have picked out a place where you're going to do it. Maybe you're, you've got a notebook or a journal you're going to use. Uh, maybe maybe uh, you've got that time set aside during the week that you're going to sit down and read those chapters. And I think all of those will be helpful as we get ready to go through the Bible in, in, a chronological, in a chronological order. Jesus Christ died and arose so that we could have that relationship with God, so that we could be forgiven, so that we could follow Jesus and try to imitate, I was going to say, we're going to try to imitate Paul, but let's just try to imitate Jesus, and so that we could be as much like Jesus as we possibly can, followers of Christ. May our delight be in the ways of God and the law. May, may we build and grow the relationship that God wants to have with us. 
Let's bow for prayer. Lord God, we thank you for this resource, the story that we're about to use. And help us, Lord God, as we do it, to uh, grow closer to you, to see you in, in creation, to see you in our lives and, and in the way that you want us to live. Help us, God, to, to be attentive to our witness. Help us to have those conversations where we, where we lift you up so that others who maybe don't know you right now will come to know you. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. As we uh, receive Holy Communion today, uh, our table is open. If you're here, you're welcome to receive Holy Communion today. Uh, I invite you, if you want to follow along in the hymnal, to turn to page 12. Otherwise, uh, you're welcome to just follow the screens. Everything uh, that you need will be there. Christ our Lord invites to his table all who love him, who earnestly repent of their sin, and seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us confess our sin before God and one another. Let's pray together. Merciful God, we confess we have not loved you with our whole heart. We fail to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken the law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors. And we have not heard the cry of the enemy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. That proves God's love toward us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. And so, with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join there in any hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you, do this, in remembrance to me. When the supper was over, he took the cup. Gave thanks to you. Gave it to his disciples and said, Drink from this to all of you. This is the blood of my new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of thee. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy living sacrifice in union with Christ offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith, Christ is died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here, on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, so that we may be for the world. The body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, one in ministry to all the world. Until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, your Holy Church, our honor and glory is yours, our mighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Let's pray the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father, Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom come, thy will, will be done, on earth, earth as it is in heaven. heaven. Give, Give us this day our daily bread. bread. And forgive, forgive us our trespasses, trespasses as, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. I invite those 
those who are having me serve to come forward at this time. When we share the loaf, the bread, we're sharing the body of Christ. When we drink from the cup, we're sharing the blood of Christ. We're going to ask everyone to come forward, and then you'll be handed a piece of bread, and you'll be handed a cup. And uh, if you're not quite ready to receive in that way, we have the package communion that we've been using previously. They're in bowls on the side, and you're welcome to use one of those. You're also welcome, if you know someone who would benefit from receiving communion who's not here today, you're welcome to take as many of those as you may need for that. All is ready. I invite you to come. Yeah, we should. I'll go. The containers to put the cups in didn't get to that. Okay. And Nancy's going to. So
Let's uh, join together now in prayer after receiving. Eternal God, God, we give you thanks for this holy mystery. In which you have given yourself Grant that we may go into the world in the strength of your spirit to give ourselves to others. In the name of Jesus Christ our Lord. We're receiving our offering, our plates. There's one in the back, there's two up here in the rail, and there's one in the office area. We also have our baskets for our rail offering for the month of September. Our rail offering for the month of September is going to go to a hurricane relief. We're going to send that to Home Corps. So any gifts that go into the baskets here at the front will go to hurricane relief. We sent out an email late last week for supplies. They're asking us to collect. And so as you collect those supplies and bring them here to the church, we'll set them up on the table or on the counter. And then as those uh, get here, we'll get those on to the district, to the, the district place for distribution, or we're close enough, we could probably take them all the way to the depot that's in Conroe. And so we'll be making sure that stuff gets to where it needs to go. And our offering for this month will also go for the hurricane relief. Um, oh. No, 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 actually, no. The paper just has a schedule with the dates and the times. And, and I hope that I'll get something out to you that'll have that, like, so you can see it. Um, I realize that trusting in memory is not always the. <laughs> I know my memory is not the greatest. I'll try to help. But we'll try to get something out to you. And maybe, maybe we'll have a piece of paper next week. Our copier did come back from Strike. <laughs> Anything else? Let's uh, let's stand and sing our doxology. Praise God. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit.